Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today's topic is why use an external sound card when you can use the onboard sound card? Is there any point in using the onboard? Is it better and why is it better? Let's try to find out in this video. I've been making videos on YouTube for about a year now and I keep on getting questions as people ask me do you really hear any difference in the using a sound card is there any point in using a discrete sound card and does it is it better and why is it better and is it worth the money that you pay for it and um, my question of my answer to that question is always yes it is but it's not that easy because well as with all things sound is a matter of taste um, it's like people buying uh, or eating fries some like french fries some like flemish fries which are bigger ones um do you like the ones from the oven or maybe an air fryer or maybe a deep fryer and what kind of fat do you use it's all those questions and it's the same with sound if you prefer just run-of-the-mill cheap chips and fries and that's all f great if you like into that do do use it do eat it and if you want to have something with better quality then you should buy better potatoes well it's like that with sound cards um it's not that there's a huge difference but there is a difference and in this video i want to try to explain to you what the difference is and how you can try to figure out if it's something for you or if it's not and first of all let's start with a bit of history of sound cards now when windows vista was first introduced it came with a completely redesigned audio path now what that means is that the hardware and software could not talk to each other directly anymore as it used to do um, all audio had to go through the Universal Audio Architecture, UAE, UAAAU. Uh, well, Microsoft did not do this completely by surprise because beforehand audio drivers were always audio driver hell. The audio drivers did not function or they were so badly written that they gave errors, blue screens and everything in between. So the quality of the drivers wasn't that good and so Microsoft said, well, that's enough for now. I'm going to redesign the complete audio path and now there's just one, one audio path and that's what we're all going to use. At first hand, that's really good and really nice because, well, it did mean that the PCs became a lot more stable, at least Windows became a lot more stable because of this decision, but it also had a couple of downsides. And one of the major downsides is, uh, downsides is that because of the redesigning of this audio path, it killed off EAX or the enhanced uh, audio extension, which created more of a 3D feeling to games. It also killed off all the other processing techniques that it has, and also it killed off the audio processor. Beforehand, on the earlier models of video cards, you had dedicated memory like the uh, X5, which had a 40, uh, 64 megabytes of memory on board in which it could store sound effects and all those kind of things. It wasn't able to use that anymore and also the all audio processing was done now by the processor itself. So there was no real need for a dedicated sound card anymore. Now that isn't that much of a problem be because well all audio products back then sucked. Uh, there's no real other way to, to tell you this but speakers sucked headphones sucked and you couldn't hear the difference between a dedicated sound card except for the eax or the 3d positioning sound um, and an onboard sound well now that time has moved on and audio systems have gra uh, greatly superior quality well like one of my favorite is the Biodynamic MMX 300. You can see that, well, audio has become more and more important. You don't have those wiki wacky uh, headphones anymore. No, you have real dedicated headphones. So there also has a bigger question for quality products that uh, will create that sound. Realtek suddenly realized, well, it's all very nice that all the sound quality is needed. 
and it started to realize that the Realtek codex that they were offering, well, they weren't that good. And the sound quality that a codec uh, delivers is measured by a signal to noise ratio SNR. The higher the SNR, the better the, so the sound quality. And the ALC, well, what do you have? 887, 889 that kind of series uh, generally produced about a signal to noise ratio of about 95 to 97 decibels, which isn't that good. And all of a sudden, well, sound card manufacturers said, well, let's make something better uh, that produces a lot better SNR. And they came up with sound cards that produced 110 decibels and some even higher, like the uh, Asus Phoebus Solo. Um, ALC picked up on that and they created a new uh, codec which was the ALC 1220. Now this one is incorporated in a lot of motherboards these days, especially the higher class motherboards and even I bought one because my motherboard also has an excellent digital to, to analog converter which is the Sabre and it's not the normal Sabre, you have a different uh, qualities in that one and this is one of the supreme category you should also take other factors into appreciation when you are well deciding how good is the quality audio quality of my system at this moment and one of the more forgotten ones is emi or electromagnetic interference and that's all the hisses and all the blips and all the other things that you can hear somewhere in the background when you have a headset now if you have a poor quality motherboard or poor quality sound card, you can hear hisses and pops and everything in between. And it's not really nice. And it's, in my opinion, it's very distracting. The motherboard that I bought, I just said it, well, it had the excellent or the best Sabre uh, digital to analog converter. It also had the ALC 1220 uh, codec on there. And so I thought, well, sound will be, will be great and I do not need an external uh, sound card anymore. But then I started playing and I could hear hisses and pops and I was really disappointed because the motherboard that I have is really expensive and especially when I bought that one. I specifically bought that one which was more expensive than the one I bought for my brother-in-law which is the uh, Gaming 5. I bought the Gaming 7B just because of the sound. Now for the last couple of months I've been using four sound cards on my gaming system. Uh, listening to songs, playing those games, listening to the, the here New York in 3D. Um, those sound cards are the Asus uh, Xonar DX, the Asus Xonar AE, the Creative Sound Blaster Z and the Creative AE5. Now you might wonder why do I only use those four? Well, those are the only sound cards that I can find in shops today. All the other sound cards that I currently have, which is the Fiba Solo, the x uh, there are some other, other sound cards that I have. None of those can be bought in shops anymore. Well, maybe they can somewhere, but they're not generally available. So I've been using those four sound cards and I was trying to make, okay, which ones do I really like and which ones would I recommend for you? Maybe as a starter, uh, who, for someone who doesn't have a headset, uh, sorry, and who doesn't have a sound card yet and is interested in that field. Or maybe, well, you just want the best of the best. Let's start off at position four. The Asus Xonar DX was introduced back in 2008 and is still available for 110 euros, which is, well, very expensive for a card that's almost, well, not almost, is 11 years old. Also, the latest drivers that I could find are dating back to 2015. There are some advantages to this card because it's a low profile card. So if you're building an HTPC, it may be interesting to get one also because of the support for Dolby Theater and its ability to encode or encode audio on the fly. But in general, I think it's overpriced and the lack of support for drivers makes that this card well is in fourth place. And I think you can understand why. It's not a bad card, but it's too expensive, too old, lack of drivers, and that makes this sound card not really good. 
third place it's the creative sound blaster z it's well it's a great card and it's rather similar to the ae5 but it has a slightly lesser components its digital to analog converter is in my opinion uh, inferior the latest drivers are back from 2017 from the 3rd of march uh, well is kind of recent in driver country but still it's not that recent i've also heard that this sound cards of i read actually on my in the comments on some of my videos that this card does have audio issues with 19 uh, windows 10 1903 i've tested this video card prior to uh, 1903 so i'm not really sure what happened and what i understand now is that it's a, a windows thing not a creator thing that this uh, uh, card has audio troubles but still because of its lesser components and its price which is about 80 uh, euros it comes in its, uh, third place In second place comes the Asus Xonar AE. Now this card is in some ways comparable to the Asus Phoebus Solo. It has an C media audio processor, albeit that the Solo is more superior. It has an amplifier, uh, which is from Texas Instruments and technically Burr Brown is also Texas Instruments, of course, but it's overall understandably lesser uh, components. If the FIBA Solo was still available, I still wouldn't recommend it because, well, it has hardware issues. And although the, the components are great, it, the car is way too old, the driver support is lacking. And if you still have it and it works great, still do use it because it's not, an, in, from an audio perspective, a bad card, but I wouldn't recommend it at all. And now for the first place, um, it will not come as a surprise to a lot of people, but it's of course the Creative AE5. And uh, well, there's there's a lot of things I can say about this sound card. It was introduced back in 2018, well, which is last year. Uh, the drivers are also from last year. They haven't been updated since, so that's a bit of an issue. It is really expensive. It's the most expensivest sound cards that i have at this moment which cost uh, 132 euros and that's the lowest price that i could find uh, but if you look at the sound the components are used of course the saber 32 which has a uh, dynamic range of 32 bits it has great signal to noise ratio it's warm it's accurate it it has everything that i expect from a sound card um I've heard that the AE9 is on the way. Um, I'm hoping that I can give that sound card a go and give it a try, but I'm not really sure. I've also read somewhere that the X5 series has been given a new life, but I don't have more news on that. Thank you for watching. It has been a great time to making this video, but it has been far too long. I've It has been taking me about three months now just to give me enough testing time for all sound cards but it's it for me today thank you please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe